Hello and welcome. Today's project is all about mind reading and fortune telling. We're talking about the anxious personality and what makes up that personality. We talked about generalizing, we talked about avoidance, we talked about reassurance seeking, and now we're talking about mind reading and fortune telling. Now, I had all of these habits. These are the big ones that I see in my clients, that I saw in myself. And when we see that we're doing these habits unconsciously, that's a great moment because that's the moment where we can start to break these habits and then begin the formation of our new identity, the person that we want to be become because we don't want to stay in the same state. We don't want to stay the same people. We want to move forward. We want to kill off the parts of us that are not serving us because I had a lot of strategies I was playing out that kept me stuck in anxiety. So we have to change our strategies and thus we change ourselves. So mind reading, it's pretty straightforward. You know what it is. It's when we come to that conclusion where we know what that person's thinking. Well, we think we know what that person's thinking. So for, for an example, you're walking down the road, someone gives you a strange look and you think, oh my God, they think I'm ugly or they think, uh, you know, I'm, you know, looking horrible or, you know, they think my jacket is, is not nice or something like that. And so they come to that conclusion that they know that what the other person's thinking. And so I experienced this in my ex relationship when I would be with her and she would be in a bad mood and I would internalize it and, and think I did something wrong. I would blame myself. And I was very sensitive towards this. I was very sensitive towards other people's energy and, and then I would internalize it. So anxiety sufferers are very internal. And I would experience this with my boss at work where when I would uh, be at work editing and he would be in some sort of mood, I would I'd be like, oh my God, did I do something wrong? You know, why is he like this? And I would walk on eggshells and you know what I mean? I would be overly sensitive. And so mind reading can really hold us back from, from living that potential you, the you that you've always wanted to become. And the reason why is because of our self-respect. An anxiety sufferer, you know, they don't have the self-respect they really need to get over this hurdle, right? I had no self-respect for myself. So developing self-respect is really important for overcoming anxiety and overcoming mind reading because we project our beliefs onto other people. Anxiety sufferers, sufferers will project their own beliefs that make up their rocky foundation onto the other people. If you think you're unhealthy, if you think you are ugly, if you think you are weak-minded, you're gonna project those beliefs onto the other people and so when you go to interact with these people and look into their eyes, anxiety sufferers don't want to look into the other person's eyes because the eyes are essentially the gateway to the soul and they're a reflection of your own self in that other person, right? So you look into the other person's eyes and then you look away quickly because there's a lot of shame, guilt. Uh, you're not living up to who you could be. There's not enough self-respect in your own self. So mind reading comes from that. There's not enough. You look at yourself in, in such a poor manner. And I used to avoid looking myself at myself in the mirror because I, I didn't even know who I was. I wasn't even um, myself, right? And you hear a lot of people and therapists say, well, especially with my clients, because some of the clients that I coach, their therapists say to them, you should be comfortable with who you are right now. And there's nothing more toxic than saying that to somebody. You, it's like, 
be comfortable with that who I am now. If I told my old self to be comfortable with who you are in that anxious identity, I would have never overcame anxiety and I would have never have got to where I am right now. Look where I am right now, helping thousands of people. Uh, I feel uh, neutral all the time in my emotions and I have so much self-respect and I'm so proud of myself. And if I told my old self, you know, it's okay to be, you know, it, it, you know, you should be okay with who you are. It's like, no, you shouldn't. Because if I, if I stayed the same person, I would still be chaotic. My life wouldn't be where it is now. So change, develop, and earn that self-respect. Because when you develop that self-respect, what does it matter what other people think of you? When you have your own self-respect, when you can look at the, in the mirror and be proud of who you are, why do you need the acceptance of other people? I certainly don't. I don't need the acceptance of other people. I have so much self-respect and I earned it through hard work and discipline. And then there's fortune telling. Fortune telling is placing that avatar, the you, the avatar, into the future, into the future scenario that you predict is going to be, you know, anxiety provoking and, and stressful. You place yourself in that situation in your mind, you play it out, and if the outcome is terrible, you don't confront it. And a lot of anxiety sufferers don't confront those scenarios because they play it out in their minds. And they're like, oh my God, it's going to be horrible. I'm going to have a panic attack. I'm going to have anxiety. I'm going to run away. People are going to judge me. And then um, I might even die in that scenario. And so they don't even go to school. They don't go to work. And I, I relate to this because I would avoid going to work. I would play out the scenario in my mind. It would be terrible. You know, all of the what if thoughts come out and then the self-talk happens, right? The self-talk being... What if I show up late? What if I don't get enough sleep and then I don't perform properly? What if um, I embarrass myself while I perform at work? Or what if I embarrass myself at the social get together? And all of these thoughts bombard the anxiety sufferer and then they don't want to go and confront it because it's too overwhelming at that point. It's, it's too catastrophic. Why bother? And so I would avoid it. But what we constantly focus on is what we manifest. We manifest the, the, the things we're focusing on all the time because if you're constantly catastrophizing over certain things, your unconscious is going to be like, oh, this is what Brad values. This is what he wants. Because we're, even, though that we, even though we don't want it, the more we think about it and ruminate over it, the more we're going to manifest it because it's constantly in our mind's eye. We're constantly projecting it into our own selves and we're going to manifest it unless you start to project what you want to happen instead. What do you want to happen instead so that the more you manifest what you really do want, the more you're going to get it. Your unconscious works that way. It works unconsciously under your conscious awareness. So speak to the unconscious mind. Tell it, this is what you want. Because if you keep ruminating over what you don't want, you're going to keep getting what you don't want. And that's not good. So my self-talk would be active all the time. I would be fearful of experiencing panic in the workplace. I would be fearful of embarrassing myself in front of other people. And so I had to change that. I had to add more order to that chaos. And I had to begin the new 
manifestation of what I really wanted instead. So you have to prove to your old self that you can actually manifest what you want. You can actually survive in that scenario. You project it in your mind and you imagine, oh yeah, I'm going to have that panic attack. Oh yeah, I'm going to embarrass myself and I'm going to not feel good uh, at that event. Because I, a lot of the time, you know, I would feel a lot of anxiety when I was suffering back in the day. I would feel horrible. Even in my safe zone, I would feel anxious irritable, I would feel bad. But then what happened was I would imagine myself feeling this way in the future and I would be like, well, if I feel like this now, how am I gonna handle that tomorrow or tonight even? Like, how am I gonna handle that when I feel this way? But we have to prove to ourselves that we can handle uh, those situations even though we don't feel right because the time will never come when you feel right to handle it. You're always going to feel that resistance when you go into those anxiety producing scenarios and that's when change happens because when you're in those scenarios even though you don't want to be in those scenarios you are stimulating new neuronal pathways. You're proving to yourself that you can in fact handle these situations even though you don't feel up to it. So even though back in the day when I would get like three hours sleep before work because I would ruminate over it, I would show up at work tired, but I would do a good job even though I didn't feel right. And so even though I was anxious about not doing a good job because of not getting enough sleep, I was able to function. I was able to think properly. I was able to get my work done effectively even though I wasn't feeling uh, right to be there. I had to prove to myself that even though I was feeling bad, I can accomplish what I want. And so what are the solutions to mind reading and fortune telling? How can we really prepare ourselves properly so that the future you can manifest what you really want? Because there's many yous across time and we must sacrifice uh, things in the present moment so that the future you can benefit from it. So for example, if you are Imagining that a situation, a get-together work in the future is going to be uh, stressful or anxiety producing. Well, instead of just watching TV and playing video games and then eating junk foods before bed, instead of that, sacrifice those instant gratifications and prepare yourself with a sword and shield so that you can handle those uh, situations more appropriately. So for example, an hour before bed, no stimulation, no TV, no video games. Prepare yourself. So take a hot bath, light some incense, calm down the body so that you can get enough sleep or then you can sleep deeply enough so that you can get the rest you need so that the future you can wake up and handle the challenges of that day. Also, schedule your day because anxiety sufferers are in disorder. They need to add order. They need to add some certainty to their lives. So schedule your day the next day in detail. For example, when I was a camera trainee and I was overcoming anxiety, what I would do is work made me stressed out. You know, the next day I had all of these what if thoughts but a schedule released a lot of that anxiety because I knew the schedule. I knew the, I had some order to the uncertainty. I had some certainty to the uncertainty, right? So I, I scheduled my day, wake up at this time, have breakfast at this time, leave my house at this time. Um, and, and, and I put it, it, arrive at work at this time. 
you know, meditate at this time. And this structure helped me, uh, helped release the excess thoughts in my mind so that I could get the rest I needed and it wouldn't keep me up at night. I would prepare all of my stuff the night before so that when I woke up, everything is ready, everything is organized. I know exactly what to do because human beings, we need routine. We need some sort of certainty because if there's too much uncertainty, you're not gonna be able to sleep right. It's gonna keep you up. You're not gonna get to sleep. You're not going to, uh, you know, be, be happy, right? Or you're not gonna be able to be calm and collective that night because you're gonna be so, you're gonna be ruminating and then a lot of people put band-aids over that rumination. They watch TV, they play video games. I see it all the time with my clients. They, I ask them, you know, what, you know, you had a bad day um, and you knew you were gonna have a stressful anxiety producing day, but what did you do before the, the, the last previous day to prepare yourself? And so one of the most powerful ways to prepare yourself is doing the manifestation movie exercise. And like I said before, you wanna manifest what you do want. Very simple. You sit comfortably in a quiet place for five minutes even, and you close your eyes, and then you imagine the day the way you want it to go. So imagine you waking up, feeling good, you getting to work on time, you have amazing posture, you're interacting with people, you're facing the challenges that you really want to avoid, but you're not avoiding them. You come back home and you have that confident posture, you imagine yourself, or, or it may be a doctor's visit that you're anxious about, you imagine yourself leaving that doctor visit. Wherever you are at that social get, get together, imagine the situation the way you want it to go. You're speaking directly to your unconscious mind. Now, you're more likely to manifest what you really want instead. Journaling, an amazing way to prepare yourself. What can you do today, today, right now or in the evening, to, to help yourself? prepare yourself. What can you avoid? I can avoid um, st any stimulation. I can, I can come home early from that friend's house and prepare for the next day. That's a great way. I, I can, you know, relax one hour before bed by meditating, by taking a hot bath, by taking a nice walk, by drinking some nice teas. This is going to help you prepare for the next day. Writing it down helps you organize the chaotic mind. Really powerful stuff. So take these techniques with you so that you can arm yourself for the challenges you are ruminating over that you know is to come. And that's where I'm going to leave you on today's video. Thank you so much for being here with me. And remember, do not let anxiety define who you are. I will see you on the next video. Bye for now. Remember to hit that subscribe button and that bell so that whenever a new video of mine appears, you will be the first to know. Namaste.